Welcome back to Pack the Rock Podcast, Episode Eight. I've been I'm your host, Carlo Brown, joined by Evan Gerke and Max Parker of the Hoosier Network. And guys, it may be the day after Halloween, but this uh, this Hoosiers team is definitely scaring Indiana fans. If you guys like my one liner there, that but, was silly. Uh, that was yeah, silly. IU just had the bye week, so now we are back after <sighs> a week of not filming a podcast. Guys, how was how was the week off? Yeah, it was. I mean, we haven't been here in a couple weeks now, and. Um, kind of got to refresh my mind from Indiana football. I went to DC this weekend. Um, that was a good time. Didn't ha- I didn't watch any college football. Um, completely kind of closed off for the bye week. That must have been nice. It was. I'm trying to think what I. Oh, I had a um, play by play workshop that was fun. Enjoyed that. So full disclosure, I did not get a chance to watch this game. Um, yeah. Well, I watched it from Champaign, Illinois, and live tweeted it. And uh, what started out so good for Indiana just ended so, so badly. Also, very quickly. Um, so, getting into that game, IU did halt their losing streak last week, though, with their bye week. So, they did not did not lose the game for the first time in five weeks. But um, during the bye week, Tom Allen mentioned that they were evalu- evaluating everything, including quarterback, for this team. And after five straight losses, I would say the exact same thing if I was the head coach. Uh, IU lost a game that they were up 14-0, and they allowed, I believe, 17 straight or something like that. Um, and they lost 17-24 to on the road to Rutgers. Um, just overall takeaways from IU's fifth straight loss. I mean, it's we we're kind of running out of steam. Uh uh, on the beat here, uh, you can probably tell. I think every week our, our energy has gotten a little bit lower yeah. as it's just harder and harder to cover this this team because uh, it feels like you're writing the same thing every week or you're you're reporting on the same things every week. Like it's it's Tom Allen being like, "Oh, we need to execute better and, and we need to look at what changes we need to make." And we need to be better. It, it, it's it's kind of based like being like, "Oh, I, I missed some throws that I shouldn't have, and I, I'm going to watch the film and see what I can do better next week." And I mean, the same things over and over again, and it's. No, like every once in a while, something will be oh this game it's a little bit better. The offensive line had a pretty good game, a couple of pretty good games after the the new uh, the new coach took over, but at the same time it's like it's they're not going anywhere. I, I mean Rutgers was a game that should have been winnable. It looked winnable. I know you're going to Piscataway and it's harder to play a team like that in a, on the road, but I mean this is an embarrassing performance from the offense, like. They had one, two drives in the second half longer than three plays. I don't like, I, I've run out of ways to say that you need to get the offense going. That's all. That's all well, you can not, say. I mean, at this point, there's not much you can do. And we'll talk about personnel um, a little bit later. But it's just like, it's kind of a similar, it's a similar situation where. Um, it's kind of like what when you have when Coach Hiller was fired and you bring in K, uh, Coach Carey, that y- you don't know how much change is actually going to happen because it's the same personnel. I mean, you can kind of say the same thing with the whole team at this point. You know, coming out of the bye week, you have you have the coaches talking about evaluating everything and this and that, but like you're stuck with the same group that has so far left you hanging with the five five straight losses. So there's not – you can't really go anywhere, you know? Yeah, and, I mean, you've got Michigan State this week – or not Michigan State. Um, Penn State. Penn State this week, Ohio State next week. Those are pretty much two chalk them up as losses. So that's a seven-game losing streak right there. Are, are they going to go without winning again this season? Is it going to be a second straight year of a, you know, nine-game losing streak? I mean, to me, it looks like that's what you're what you're looking at. Um, the, the The problem is, and I'll, we'll just jump right into, I think, the quarterback situation. Um, you've got three options, I guess. Tom Allen's leaving it pretty open for anyone to be the starter. I, I guess you can bring back Connor Bazelak. I don't really get the point of doing that at this point, um, especially with the way Tom Allen was talking. If if he was, he could have been like, oh, "We're going to stick with with Bazelak." And I, I wouldn't have been that angry but if you're gonna say like oh well we're gonna see it would feel weird to just continue to throw bays like out there um 
I also don't really get the point of putting Tuttle in there. He he's not the future of this team because he says he's transferring. He's also pretty much just base like 2.0. You you've seen what you've gotten out of him, and it hasn't been anything that you know fills in the gaps that this team needs. Maybe maybe he's a little more more accurate on some of the small throws. Maybe he makes some more throws, but it's still probably not enough for this team to kind of take a step forward and, and start winning some games. So I don't see why you don't put Dexter Williams in at this point, just no. because I think yeah. he he's he's a different look to the offense. He's going to be a little bit more mobile and hopefully, you know, with the offensive line and, and, and the, the side that side of the ball, he can, you know, play around with moving the quarterback while, while Bell can play around with moving the quarterback out of the pocket and see what you get out of that. Because I mean, that's, he he's the guy that, if this team's going to get better in the next few years, is going to be the one who has to step up. I think is going to be Dexter Williams um, to bring kind of a new dynamic level to Indiana's offense. So, yeah, you know, you you can't redshirt any, him anyway because he's already done that. Um, although I guess he, that was a medical redshirt, so maybe he can apply for an exemption. But in, even still, there's only four games left in the season, and he hasn't seen the field. Why not throw out Dexter Williams? Yeah, I mean, it, realistically, I mean, I'm just gonna say this i think we're gonna learn something from the purdue iowa game to see what purdue can do against a team that really struggles offensively um but i don't think indiana wins another game this year i don't michigan state's i guess their most winnable one left and michigan state's been really bad this year but again they're on the road and they haven't played well on the road this year yeah and even as bad as michigan state is um I think Indiana's probably worse. I I think Michigan's yeah. gonna gonna keep the, the the brass platoon in that one. Yeah, it'll be uh it'll be interesting to see. Um, if they go on this nine game losing streak, how I think they're going to, and if they if they drop the last two to Michigan State and Purdue, that would leave them at three and nine on the year. Improvement. Um, yeah, yeah, a step forward from two and ten. Um, and uh, if you guys remember a short two months ago, I asked in the first episode of this podcast, the answer is still no. Is but time out? Are you sure? Sh- Ask the question. Five I'll, wins. I'll listen to Max F- first. Okay. It, I'm not asking it again. I'm not going to ask for your, we'll, we'll get to that at the end of the season. No, let's, let's, let's still talk four about games. it. Let's talk yeah, about yeah. it. I think, right, I think it's the right what? thing to talk about. It's, now is the time and place. I think it's, it's, it it's the time it to talk now about Now is it the is. time and place. It, all right. I'm going to ask it. Is he on the hot seat? Okay. If they drop yes. the last four and then they they're already on five, so there'll be a nine game losing streak to end this entire year. Three and nine year. to end the year. Two and they, ten last they year. They don't is Tom win Allen since, on the hot te- seat. since September. They go all of October, November. Well, I guess they don't have a December game, but you get the point. They literally go two straight months of losing. Like why five wins in two years? Like come on, at a D one oh, program. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. In, in the Big Ten, how do you have your job after that? I, I Look, I'm a Tom Allen supporter um, when I used to be a, an IU fan, but I, I, I don't know how many more chances this dude can get. Are you ready for this, though? Mm-hmm. Here's the reason he's not getting fired. This it's, is a headline from Zach Ostrom. I know, but like— Tom Allen's buyout—what do you think his buyout is? It's, a, it's too much. Tom Allen's buyout, if he's fired before December of 2023, is $20 million. Do you no, want to pay for that, Carlo? Bro, I can't even pay for like my own. Listen, it, it was there was a bit. <laughs> I can't. But there was a bit of a question <laughs> of whether or not Archie Miller's buyout was gonna get was gonna get paid for, and obviously there's donors that spent for that because it's the basketball program. Like, yeah. you have to succeed in basketball if you're Indiana. Otherwise, like you won't get any money and you won't succeed anywhere. It made that like that made sense, and it was ten million. It was half as much. Tom Allen is is really expensive. I would be shocked to see someone. Fork up the money for that buyout, unless unless he takes a dramatically reduced, like like a, they like a they rearrange cut. his contract to get a pay cut. But the other thing too is this is what the third straight year with the new offensive coordinator, a couple third straight year with the new defensive coordinator. If you fire your staff and you have to do it for a fourth straight year, it's like there is no chance for any kind of like any of these players to get any sort of rhythm going because yeah. every year it's something new and oh we got to learn a new playbook and that makes it harder i mean you've got you've got like talent on this team and you yeah. can see it you've yeah. got you know Desan mccullo you've got some you've got jalen lucas you've got some young guys that have mm-hmm. a lot of talent and at this point give it a couple more years and see if they can keep a a, a group of coaches for multiple years to you know put a vision out 
that allows this team to establish a rhythm. And you're kind of seeing the same thing with Mike Woodson this year. Obviously, much different situation. Woodson had a good season last year. Um, they talked about in the preseason, this is now year two under Mike Woodson. They know what he wants from them. Now the older players can coach the younger players uh, about, okay, this is what Woodson wants. This is how we're going to make this team look. Mm -hmm. If you're, I, I don't know, Taiwan Mullen, I guess Taiwan Mullen probably won't be around last year so, or next year. Says so yeah. Noah Pierre, if you're Noah Pierre, you're under a new defensive coordinator this year. Next year, if you have the same defensive coordinator, you can teach the younger guys what he wants, what he yeah. wants his team to look like. You can keep an, an established rhythm so that next year you everyone is even more on the same page and they're taking steps forward in that learning process instead of stop, starting again at block one. Yeah. And I think you have to give this this the staff a chance to do that, especially because Tom Allen will cost $20 million to get rid of. Mm -hmm. I I think that's a fantastic point, and I also think nice, nice, Evan. That was, that's I was good. Say, that was that, <laughs> that was, was a good. very good monologue. There. I I was thinking even before you started saying that, basically exactly what you're saying. I mean, they have this fantastic recruiting class that they brought in last year, and they've already got some guys committed for next year. You know, if you have if you have a complete wiping of the slate, I mean, I don't see why everyone wouldn't up and transfer you know it then it's like the main guy you committed to and the main philosophy that you bought into in leo is gone why would you stay again do we trust this athletic department to get the next hire right as well because it is hard to hire someone in indiana they don't have the history you know yeah. even nebraska you can say oh it's nebraska they have history they've won national championships i have a question yes would kane womack come back as head coach that's actually a pretty good question. It might happen. Boom. But not this year, so. No, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I'm going to pin just, that I audio, don't, though, and, and put a date on it, November 1st, 2022. So I don't see like them replacing Allen and getting no. and I don't think better because of it. I don't think they should replace him right now. I think I think they have this coach who has established a passion and a culture with this program that they have not been able to find for a long darn time. And I don't think it's going to be easy to find a new one. I do not think the best action for this program right now would be to move on from the head coach. I will say the last two years, IU, I mean, if they don't, if they win, if they lose out, they'll have five wins in two years. I think a lot of that, I'm not going to say all of it, but they've had their, They've had luck with they've had bad luck with injuries, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Their star quarterback after their twenty twenty season tears his ACL during the season and comes back and obviously isn't the same player, like not even a fourth of the same player he was. You've got your starting receiver this year that looked like he had all the promise in the world, tears his ACL against Rutgers. I mean, it's just they they've had a bad injury luck. I mean, you have your starting offensive lineman tear it in I'm pretty sure the first quarter of week one. Yeah. It's like they, they can't catch a break, but at the same time, I get injuries are part of the game. And part of that, too, is you don't have the depth backing up. Like a exactly. lot of teams, a lot of the better teams can fill in that spot with someone who maybe not isn't as good, but is still good. And Indiana does not have that. Continue. Yeah. And I, I wait really quick. I do just want to say shout out to my one of my friends from high school. After every IU loss, he goes, Tom Allen's getting fired now, right? And I always tell him no. So because it just doesn't make sense. So there's your answer. I will say I was a little unfamiliar that there was twenty million dollars to get this dude out of town, and as a contract, I believe when you guys said it expires next December. Well, it, his buyout for twenty million dollars lasts until next December. His contract's longer than that; it's like another oh. five years on top of that. But the buyout drops down to a, a, a lower right. amount, and probably not that low. It's probably not going to drop down to two million dollars. It's probably going to still be, you know, five or eight 10. figures. Yeah. You guys think he makes it at the end of his contract? I don't uh, know. Yeah, that's it's that's too hard to say. To be determined. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll throw a little a little wrinkle in this. Okay. How about this? Next year, since we're on this trend of adding one we uh, adding one win to your your total, let's say he goes four and eight next year. Does he have his job? That's gonna be. But a lot also, harder. three of the four wins, or two, at least two of them, are non conference. Which well, also they play Ohio State to start, so I don't know if they're not it, it, that third wins. They're non conference, happen. or they're. Well, I'm saying Big ten. If they get four wins next year, 
and two of them are non conference. They get two Big Ten wins because they have one this year. So I'm saying like just w- add one to each total. Who's on? Because the, they have they play Akron and Indiana State as two of their non con teams. They should they should should well, win those games. Yeah, that's definitely like that. That's easier than Western Kentucky, Idaho, which are your two circles wins. They also have Louisville. Um, that's your that's your Cincinnati replacement as your tougher tougher um, at non-conference Lucas opponent. Oil. at Lucas Oil. I mean, I I don't really know what Louisville's up to these days, so I have no idea. We could ask but last year's beat reporter Griffin Gonzalez. We could. Let's um, not. Let's not ask. But I mean, <laughs> you, you've got Rutgers at home next year. You've got Wisconsin at home. You've got uh, Michigan State at home. Illinois away. Um, Look at us talking about the 2023-24 schedule. Yeah, when Wait, uh, I guess Carlo will be here. Yeah. Oh, it'll just wow. be you, Carlo. You're we're gonna be covering the team your, by yourself. We're previewing your next year. Yeah, four and eight, <laughs> four and eight, a third straight year of not going to a bowl game. It, it, I can see the argument for him being on the with that buyout dropping down. I can see the argument for him being on the hot seat at that point. But we should have a. Uh, we should guest on this podcast next year when we're graduated, like around this around the eighth game, and we rehab this conversation. Well, hopefully by the eighth oh. game they're four and four, and at least fighting for a bowl game with Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan State, and Purdue. A much easier end of schedule. Ooh, end, end of season schedule. Yum. <laughs> but that means Gross. beating Maryland and Rutgers or Louisville to start the season. I, I mean, unless you knock yeah. off Ohio State week one. It's not going to happen, but you never know. Hey, what if it did? Penn State. Penn State. Penn, number Il- eight. Penn. Illinois. Whoa. What if, hold up, what if Ohio State enters the year next year ranked number eight? They're not going to. They're going to be higher than that. I would lock it in as a win, though. Okay. If they enter in number eight, just like Penn State did. Wow. Okay. Should we get back to 2022 first? Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. come back yeah. to yeah. Uh, 2022. Yeah. I think we've already talked to enough about this Rutgers game. They kind of, you know, just fell off after the first drive of the game that is scripted. They lost um, by week, whatever. Now we got Penn State this weekend. Uh, number 16 team in the country. Um, I mean, first question I have on the itinerary. Does Indiana have a chance? Guys, what do you guys think? No. Okay, I'm going to agree and say no. However, I, I don't think Penn State is as good as they – I mean, they haven't looked great against some, some some of the better teams. They also barely beat Northwestern. I also think, again, we're, we're going back to Illinois Week 1 where it was like, who's going to be the quarterback? Ooh, Ooh you've ooh. got this fun, spooky Halloween. Ooh, Halloween. Um, oh, it, God. <laughs> if, if I'm Penn State, I'm – game planning for Dexter Williams as much as I am for anyone else. Wow. Because because Can't. here's the thing. Like if you game plan for Connor Bays, like you game plan for Jack Tuttle. Unless I don't know, Jack Tuttle has like springs implanted in his knees that make him jump really far or something. Um but well, no one knows about. But Dexter Williams is very different. So you have to be almost equally prepared for those two because I can I can see a, a situation where you maybe you even see both in a game. Um and if if they do throw out Dexter Williams and they're throwing in a new wrinkle in the playbook in the offense, a a very small small percent of me wants to be like, okay, but what if? But no, they don't have a chance. Also, they lost Cam Camper for the season. Cam Camper tore his ACL. Uh, Coach Allen confirmed that. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday at the press conference, that is a massive loss for this team. Who I mean, I, I think far and away he's been um, the best player on the offense. I don't know if anyone would disagree with me on that, but no, nope, you're right. Like he's he's been really good. You know, coming in from JUCO, we all kind of noted him as maybe a guy who could be step in wide receiver two, and he's been wide receiver one. He's been that good. Um, Connor Bays, like obviously had a really good connection with him. I I guess Anderson Kobe or Emory Simmons is now your number two option. I don't think those guys can fill his shoes, so that is an even bigger detriment for this team to be able to. Um, knock off a ranked Penn State, a team that they only, they've only beat twice in program history. They're 2-23, and 23, I believe, against Penn State. One of those wins, obviously, coming in 2020, we all know what happened. That was the last time they played at, in, in Bloomington. So now you've got a team coming back for the first time since a shocking upset. They're ranked again. 
Uh-oh. They're they're twice they're ranked twice number eight times two, number sixteen. Uh oh. Is this gonna be an upset times two? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, Maybe they'll actually be there to You to are you are it. correct. Twenty three and two, Penn State leads. Yeah. Um another we talked about Cam Camper, the change. Obviously, he's not there. Just two other notes, three other notes from the depth chart. Cam Jones does appear on it, but I don't think Think he's gonna has play? He, has he not been appearing? No. In recent weeks, no. He's not been listed in recent weeks. He he he's listed as the third option so, for that linebacker position. Yeah. So likely not gonna play. I guess you know he's day to day at or, or game to game at this point. Yeah. So I guess the option is there, but it didn't sound like he was gonna be coming back this week. Yeah. The other two kind of notable changes, and I think potentially only changes, is at right guard. Instead of Tim Weaver, they're putting in Khalil Benson now. And instead of Parker Hanna, Joshua Sales Jr. Yeah, and Sales and um Sales and Benson have been seem to be better than the starters when they've yeah. gotten that role. Yeah. So And they have gotten they have gotten play. It's not like they're just getting thrown out there. They no, yeah, they, they, they play season. every game. Not as many snaps as the starters, but they do play. So I I'm I'm happy to see that move, I think. Yeah. Um Omar Cooper also hasn't been on the depth chart, but Alan mentioned they're redshirting him, which is why he hasn't been appearing in, you know, the kick returner role. Yeah. Um, so that's if you missed that change, that was one that happened, I guess, in the last four games. <laughs> yeah. Aside from aside from that, really everything is everything on the defense, at least. Caden Turner's another one, a freshman who's popping up. I believe he was a three star. Um, he is behind uh, Aaron Casey in the depth chart now, replacing Jared Casey. Yeah, I was gonna say, did Jared Casey get injured? He's not on the depth chart. He is not. And I know he was. I think he missed part of one game, but I might have missed him being out for uh, a length of time. Um, I because we never heard anything. You know, some something to just note here. But if you look at the depth chart, they have Connor Bazelak as quarterback. Yeah, I they don't do. think that means anything. I will say though, if they, I okay, that makes sense. If they did that in the middle of the week, um, I feel like Penn State and IU media would kind of go I mean, crazy. I guess They'd you could you could have done the like kind of base like or Jack Tuttle or and Dexter Williams isn't even on it. Um, but I don't really think I I'm not putting any stock into no, that. I don't think they're not gonna they're not gonna announce the new starting quarterback <clears throat> by depth chart buried in the the game notes. No, Tom Allen's going to announce the starting quarterback before the first team offense takes the field? No way. I also didn't realize that Matt Holt was a redshirt freshman. I thought he was like a junior. He's been a guy that yeah. has kind of has had some big, big plays, and he's a walk-on, too. Um, has gotten a lot of kind of run for the Hoosiers, but I guess he's younger than I thought he was. He looks he looks older. Sorry, Cal- Matt. Calvin Ridley did the Jaguars. Saw that. Are the Jaguars good this year? No. No. They lost to Broncos country. Let's ride. <laughs> <laughs> They're not good. They they looked good for like the first three weeks. I think they, they were looked like insane. One, two and one. Everyone or... looks good against the Colts, though. That This is oh. true. I said that. Well, Sorry, all right. Colts fans. Back oh. to the <laughs> professional football team in Indiana. Yes. Um, Or maybe not. Professional? The other one. Uh, <laughs> I've been the doing that. Bro- okay, I will say. <laughs> the okay. amateur football team in Indiana. I know. That's paid. my fault. Paid amateur. I've, uh. NIL. Well, well, I guess they're, they're not. Yeah, they're not technically paid amateurs. That, then, that's oxymoron. Also, they're still amateur football players, but they get money through their name, image, image, image and likeness. Let's Different go, things. I, I'm, I'm in an NIL class. I know you're, all about this. Also, you are on a roll today. Yeah, you're eating. Good for you, man. Good for you. Also, quick I took a side couple note. weeks off and my brain refreshed. <laughs> it refreshed. I need that. Uh, quick side note before um, we go back on topic. I'm very excited for uh, NCAA 23. Oh, yeah. I don't have any gaming. Con- well, I guess I have an Xbox One at home. I don't think it's going to be on I the Xbox One. Um, and I, <laughs> I have the old NCAA, but I don't have an Xbox 360, so I yeah. can't play that. But I am excited. Carlo, NCAA we're really... 14 was, may have been my favorite video game I in never the last. Played it. That's the I one I have. It. It's crazy. It's great. I never. Played I had a lot it. of fun. I'm so excited. That, I played that one a lot. I played. Um, you can score like 100 points in that game. I played a lot of Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Um, I also played a lot of. I played a lot of Bo2. 
Oh, yeah. I used to grind. Yeah. That. I pl- I played a lot of GTA with my friends. Oh, also, never played that. Going even further back when I used to play my GameCube, um, I had NASCAR Thunder 2003, and it was the hardest game for whatever reason. Wow. I just could not learn how to drive. No. But the point of me bringing this up is, did you guys see? The, the, wall? The, high, the wall ride from the, the NASCAR race this weekend in Martinsville? No. Yes. Absolutely insane. The most insane thing I've ever it. seen in NASCAR. I was like, oh, okay. There was a race in He's Martinsville? touching the wall. Not, not Martinsville, Indiana. Okay, I was going to say, like, huh? <laughs> no, it was, he, he <laughs> literally, highway? he was, I'll, I'll give the rundown for Carlo and the other fans of the podcast who aren't racing fans. And then we'll keep talking about And then we'll keep, <laughs> yes. He, he was down, he needed to pass two cars on the last lap to get into the championship for NASCAR. Okay. Oh and he God. was like decently far behind. So he put it into fifth gear, slammed to the wall, and just rode the wall and passed two people to get into the championship. It's insane. It on the, the last lap? On the last lap. Oh it was, he literally, like, afterwards, he's like, I learned this in a video game. Like, I didn't know if it was ever going to work. It was awesome. Imagine just sending your whole, like, chance to make it to the championship off of something you learned in, like, a video it, game. It's, it's like a That's Hail Mary, a but story. better. It's That's cooler a than a Hail Mary. Story. It's awesome. Okay. Um, was this what the announcer sound like? Is that what the NASCAR? But they were like, "This guy, it was driver's similar, gonna yeah. win the game. He's riding the wall." It was, well, he, 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 oh my he God. The thing was, he didn't win the race. He came in like fourth or something, but it got him enough to oh, to like he won the race the in his books. Oh yeah. Can you tell I watched NASCAR? I can. Okay. Um, Football. Also, that is my all-time favorite broadcast call. It's the radio call of so the good, six. so good. Chills every time. Hopefully, we don't get copyright striked for playing that. Probably That's, not. Can we get copy? Is that a copyrightable thing? I don't know. Fair use? I don't know. Yeah. Um, predictions, right? Are we on to that? Or yep. is there anything else we, we want to talk about? We are predictions. <laughs> and uh, looking Wait, at... Wait, we're at predictions already? Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Crazy That stuff, went fast. Man. How much... Okay, one we more thing. Much How about much uh, ratio of, of IU football talk to non-IU football talk? I'd give it like 80 to 1. <laughs> today. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, 50, definitely been a unique 60, podcast yeah. today. Definitely. Okay. I think that's what the people want, though. I don't think they want to have to think about I, IU football honestly, more than they have yeah. to. I mean, they know the state of the team. It's a bye week. Can't really say much. Yeah. We're having fun. Maybe it's they'll bounce Tuesday. back. Maybe I'll surprise you with my prediction to get back on top. 63-3. Are you bringing mm-hmm. it back? Mm-hmm. Let's go, Max. Actually, he Max. is he is 5-3, and three, and if he would be right on that prediction, he'd be 6-3, and three, which is close to 66-3. <gasps> oh, yeah. Which is close to 28-3, Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> All right, I don't know why I did that, but I'm gonna We're predict. The, I'm gonna predict the it. game first. Do it. Um, I I want to say I was the only one who was right last week. Um, let's go, Evan. I don't remember what my score prediction was, but I did predict Rutgers is gonna win, which puts me in a tie with Carlo in first place at six and two. So that's impressive. One of us is gonna have to make a different prediction to determine. I'll, the okay, I'm gonna say this now. If it comes down to it at Purdue, and we have the same record. And this is you, you too, Max. If you pull it out, <laughs> if wh- whoever has the closest score is the only one that's going to get a win. I, I also think um, it's really okay. going to come down to Michigan State. I think that's the only one that we might have different Ooh, predictions on. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, you could pretty much chalk mine and next week. I've got Penn State this week and Ohio State next week. You know? Yeah, don't think that's out th- of the this blue. is spoilers. This must be shocking to those listening that we're not going to pick Indiana to win in the next two weeks. Yeah. All right. Carla, go ahead. Let's hear it. All right. So, like I said, I have Penn State winning. Um, I'm going to put this one. Um, okay. I think I think they're going to roll out with Baselak as their quarterback. I think okay. Tom Allen is kind of just puffing his chest and giving the media what he wants. But I think Penn State is going to win this game against Indiana. Probably I'm going to give them 42 To 17. Okay. All right. I'm going to, so the line is 14. Really? Penn State is favored by 14 points. And over-under is at 53 and a half. So if you take that exact, if you take the over, I believe it's 41-13 is the final score. I'm going to go, I'll shave three points off Penn State, give them to Indiana. 38-16. All right. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Indiana's defense is gonna hold up a little bit better than you guys have been saying. I also think they're gonna run with Dexter Williams this week. 
uh, mm. give a new kind of dynamic to the offense and see a little bit more success out of that than they have okay. recently. I'm going to go with 31-20 Penn State. Indiana covers. Indiana covers. Yeah. Okay. Great teams win. Or good teams win. Great, Great teams, teams cover. cover. Great teams cover. Did the Packers cover? Did the Packers win? No. All right, guys. <laughs> that didn't need to get brought up. <laughs> That's a whole different topic. That's my fault. Actually, we can I, do another hour. As pod on as that. we're doing this, um, before I end the show, I'm gonna just make sure Green Bay hasn't made no, any. They haven't. I'm looking. Oh, right of course they haven't because they, they never do. All right, whatever. Back to IU football. Um, like I said, guys, it's gonna be hard this week. <laughs> I don't think they can pull a 2020 part two. Um, I think Penn State's gonna get the win, but. Nonetheless, we'll uh, we'll go to the game. Max, you're calling it. I will be doing the video content. Evan will be writing a fantastic story. As always, always, always writing a story. Um, so I will Keep say though, guys, down. it though I was losing. Um, I have found this beat to be I, actually pretty fun. Um, oh, for sure. And I've definitely learned a lot. Um, big credit to Max for helping me out there. Um, it's been it's been fun and I'm I'm glad that I'm doing it. I don't regret it at all. So oh no, um, it makes it sound like you're saying goodbye or is this the last podcast? No, not at all. But I'm we'll just saying I'm just saying it it. You guys mentioned it's getting harder every week. It, I love football and you know <laughs> it's getting hard, but it's, not, um, yeah. it's been fun. So uh, like I said, we'll see Saturday. Uh, only time will tell what fate will do to this Hoosiers team. And Tom Allen, for that sake. But even though yeah. that $20 million bio is not looking too hot for the athletic department. All right. And that is all we have for Pack the Rock Podcast, Episode 8. I have been your host, Carl O'Brien, alongside Mac Par- Max Parker and Evan Gerke of the Hoosier Network. Can the Hoosiers get the dub against the Nittany Lions? We will see on Saturday. And for now, we will see you guys next week from Pack the Rock Podcast.